lowly little session meads don't go that way. That's just not how they are. It's they're subtle, much under you know much more understated from from their their bigger batter siblings. And you know, so I don't think they they don't think they attract as much attention by just anybody in general. But I think if you if you make it well, like there's no obvious flaws in it. If it's nice and clear, it's got a good you know level of carbonation to it and then you've got some flavor there whatever you're calling it like strawberry lemonade we're about to keg it it's gonna taste like strawberry lemonade so if you ever put fruit in your lemonade you kind of know what that's gonna taste like Mm -hmm. and it's gonna be fizzy is it gonna be awesome it will win an award i'm gonna have to wait and see i don't know yeah i I honestly don't but i'm concerned about it for the feedback just because i want to see after having feedback on on you know, hundreds of things I've entered in competition over the last 10 plus years. How does that compare? But it wouldn't stop from making it again, especially if when we taste it around with friends, everyone's like, oh my God, this is great, especially, you know, on a hot summer day, something like that. So I think it it certainly can be done. Everything about it is the same. It's got to have balance. It's got to be clean. It's got to be free from any over flaws. Like, and some of the flaws in session meads, probably are a little bit different than others because you don't have a lot of honey and alcohol and sugar to to offset stuff so say you let it say you let it sit on strawberries too long Uh has anybody let a wine or a mead or anything sit on strawberries for too long got one in the kitchen right now sat on strawberries for three months because i had to leave hurry before i could rack it's probably a goner (laughs) i don't know what what are you gonna taste like what, oh, what I do you, know. What do you th- I, I, I took a taste of it last week. It's nasty. <laughs> is, it pheno- is it just nasty or is it like phenolic? It's phenolic. It's hot. It's uh, It's got all these weird sort of... Um, car- there's cardboard going on in there. Cardboard and <laughs> paper bag and, you know, I mean, it's just the whole thing has just gone sideways. It's... It, you know, and rescuable. Have no idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rack it and let it settle, and rack it again, and then play around with it a little bit. And if I can't fix it, I'll throw it away. You know, I hate to do that because it wastes a good three gallons of honey. But what are you gonna do? You know. Yep. When I was making strawberry wine, I started making strawberry wine in 2004 and made it for I don't know eight, eight, nine years. I, I've made mead variations of it in the last few years, but. Some of them I would leave it on too long. Well, those little black seeds make it bitter. Yes, yes, they do. So you can get away with that to a degree if you've got lots of alcohol and lots of sugar and other flavors or you know an abundance of strawberry flavor. But if you did that to a session mead, you would taste that bitterness a lot sooner, and it would be a lot less pleasant. Now, is that so, gonna, do you think that's true for all session meads or just for traditional session meads? <sighs> Um, so I think a traditional session mead, as long as you got it fermented clean and again, you caught it around that 1.0 mark and maybe you back sweetened it a little bit because you wanted to, you know, you wanted a little bit of sugar just to, you know, help with the flavors in the honey because that will bring the flavors out of the honey a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You're probably all right. But as soon as you add anything to it, you got to keep an eye on it because, like I said about this cider that I just killed a glass of, I over-oaked it, and I, I think it's only a couple of days. Some would say, that, oh, my God, you think it's only a couple of days? Yeah, but you can taste the difference because mm-hmm. you're oaking something that's pretty light in the first place. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So I think that that's, you know, if anybody's listening out there thinking, oh, my God, I, I, I did exactly that, just remember, do, you got to do it to taste, so – don't assume for a session mead, you throw your fruit on the end and, oh, I'll just let it sit there a couple of weeks. You might need to check it like at three days and at five days. And as soon as it tastes the way you want it to, get it off of that fruit or whatever's in it. it, it you're just going to do yourself a favor to do that. Even if you just put it in a container and don't do anything with it next, but get that adjunct out of it that's mm-hmm. going to give it flavors that you don't want any more of. Well, and I think that's probably true for any mead. It's just that it's going to happen a lot faster with a true. session mead. And, you know, you were saying two days, three days, five days. Based on what we were talking about earlier, I would think check it every day. <laughs> get up yeah, and I put think... your toast in the oven and check your mead, you know. <laughs> See, I think what I found with mine, because I don't 
do adjuncts afterwards. I do everything up front because uh, I, you know, as as everyone knows, I came from the perspective of a winemaker before I started making mead. Um, I always have everything in, but the thing is, this, the the uh, hydromels finish so damn fast that your stuff's just not in there that long. And I think it uh, it sort of ends up being sort of a self balancing thing that way. I think. Yeah, and I think I. I whether no matter what kind of mead or or cider i mean this applies to to beer as well if you're adding things like fruit to it i've always felt that as soon as you lose the perception of any amount of the fruit sugar you pretty much lose the fruit because without just a little bit of that you can't your head doesn't get itself around the fact that there's raspberries i mean raspberries are a perfect example if you ferment raspberries completely dry you pretty much have unripe bitter raspberry flavor but that's about it that is not actually not how i found my raspberry wines really? and I'm, I'm pretty sure mine have gone fairly dry now this is with a wine not a mead but and i don't know i haven't really done enough side-by-side comparisons of uh wines versus meads to tell you whether or not that's that that's the way it works I mean, I think you can go. You can go big too. You certainly can. I mean, the more fruit you add to it, the more likely it is that it, the flavoring components are going to have an abundance there. But I mean, if someone's mm-hmm. using a couple of pounds a gallon of fruit, which is on the low end anyway, but let's just say yeah. for for argument that people do it, I think there's a, a number of reasons why people do it. Maybe they don't they don't want to go bigger because they're worried it's going to be too big, which, you know... Well, if you're trying not to overpower your honey, like, I've made several batches where it's like, okay, why did I bother making this with honey? I could have just used sugar. It would have been half the price. Because I can't taste the honey afterwards anyways because I use so much fruit. Yeah, and and that's why I think with the session meads, I've gotten into a... And certainly I'm going to have that challenge of tackling and, and composing the recipe correctly and getting that, you know, a, approved mm-hmm. by, by the TTB. But <laughs> I don't feel like adding the fruit up front is helpful to me because ultimately I want the fruit sugar that's in it, like real fruit, not having a ton of sugar in it. I actually might want that light touch. And I feel like the sugar in the fruit is is complex enough in that form and with all the other chemistry, its own acids and, and, you know, all the other things that are in it, putting it in a secondary, I'm almost trying to capture that. It's, um, you're steeping it rather than fermenting it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're okay. creating that, that, that tea, if you will. So that's kind of how I've, I've gone in that direction. In some cases, if you add enough fruit at that point, you don't need to add additional sugar. And that does taste different. You know, as you said, Vicky, the rawness that if you if you're going to add honey later, that you can see at the judging table, you wouldn't have that situation because you're tasting fresh, ripe fruit sugar, and that Which, is going to that is going to taste different. Yeah, and because you're used to eating fruit, you're used to tasting the sugar that way. Right. Okay, so that makes sense. That's the direction that I've gone in with it, but you know, kind of where we started with this segment of 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 the conversation is you can also let it sit there too long because if you're using whole fruit you know some whole fruits have really awesome components to them but some whole fruits have stuff in them um, like citrus if you mm-hmm. put whole slices of citrus in there don't let it sit on that white pith for very long oh yeah oh god you yeah. get a yeah. bitter note that takes yep. m- it'll age out it ages out every time but it can take months or even years yep. depending um, yep, same they, thing as over oaking Chateau Plywood. Advent, it eventually does age <laughs> into something nice, but it takes yep. a while. Um, we have a question from Twitter coming in from Stephen Rigsby, and he says, how about using banana water? Interesting banana question. Banana water. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, so my question there would be, I'm wondering what the purpose would be. Is it? Looking at the texture, because I'm thinking about, you know... Well, I would give you texture. Yeah, yeah you can get you body from that. In, in wines and in meads to, to get texture, it's not just whether there's potential, you know, nutrients in the fruit or they're looking for the fruit flavor. There, There's definitely texture. You, you could do that. I... I it's never occurred to me. I've also never fermented with bananas before. It's just something I never chose to do after seeing it. <laughs> never had the nerve. Yeah. I've seen so many banana disasters. You know, that's it's just, interesting. Oh, mine's not a disaster. It's just you know, it's almost ten years and it hasn't cleared. Yeah, mine wasn't a disaster either. But it it it, it was it was nothing to write home about. <laughs> yeah, because I'm trying to think. Um, 
uh, Jack Keller's website with all of the country and fruit wines that he has. Lots and lots mm-hmm. of recipes there that have banana in them. Yeah. I've not always been convinced that they were added for anything other than where where this questioner is, is coming from is that they do add texture. They have, I think it must be, is it glycerin or something? I can't remember what doesn't break down in there that helps add body to the end product. Mm-hmm. You could certainly do that. I... I guess I'm I'm kind of torn as to whether or not you could go overboard with that, and then you end up with body that you can't like. How do you unwind that? You're right. Yeah. Well, and and you know, banana water. Okay, is that water that's had mashed bananas in it? And if so, for how long? And you know, how much of the actual how much of the actual you know uh, a, content? A quick is left Google in shows there? that it's it's a it's a tea made from boiling bananas. Boiling bananas within or well, out of the peels. Tr- uh, I only had a quick Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the recipe faster, that faster. I used, the <laughs> recipe that I used actually did have me boiling the bananas in the peels, oh. and then take the yeah. So I had my my big old uh, stock pot with my bag of bananas, and it also wants you to let the bananas go black because they're more they're sweeter and more flavorful then. Yeah, well, that's why they say to right. let them practically go over before you make banana bread. Not only are they easier to mash, but they make better banana yep. bread. Yeah, Actually, so I, the, my best trick for banana bread: put them in the freezer, and then all you have oh to yes. cut the ends off, squish them off. You don't even have to mash them. Yeah, um, they, they. It's like milk and a cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so, I, so I think. Go ahead, yeah, in, in fairness, in fairness <laughs> to the person that asked the question, I definitely think that could be done. And and I, if anybody does that and knows how to contact me on Facebook or anywhere, I'd love to hear what would happen if you use that as a way to add body to a to a session meet and finishing because that could be a wonderful opportunity for people to try something that may seem a little unusual, but it. it it gives you the ability to bring something back, especially if it's gone too dry. That may be the huge application for it is, is that you have a few points of gravity that you, you don't want to use sugar because you don't want it to be outright sweet, but you need that body just to make it taste a little bit more complete. I could see a banana strawberry working really well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love banana strawberry um, smoothies. I, I would love a banana strawberry meat. I've wanted to try that for years and basically avoided it because bananas never clear, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, so am I in the exception to to the statement that you, you've made where, where you, you're saying that um, making them go bone dry gives you that bitter thing that you just can't get rid of? And I know, I know what you are referring to. I've never been able to actually put it in words, but I, I definitely know what you're talking about. Is is apple. So making a sizer, I, I can't handle any sweetness in a sizer at all. And if there is any sweetness, like the first one, when I used to make things sweet to about 10 to, to 15, so 10... 1.015, I mean. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I, I used to... I, I carbonated that, and it made the best sizer I've ever made. Um, but you needed the carbonation there. You've got to cut that sweetness. Any sweetness in apple is just terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I live in apple country. I mean, I'm London area, New Hampshire. We, we got a ton of apple mm-hmm. farms, so I, I've... I, end, I tend to make a lot of apple stuff, so I, I'm definitely someone who likes sugar with my apple, but I don't like too much because, as you said, unless you have enough carbonation to cut that, it doesn't taste balanced, most certainly. Like what they've done to Strongbow recently. Oh, God, yeah, they ruined it. Just too yeah. sweet. Yeah. Oh, really? Especially I haven't if you're had fermenting it the apple. If, if you're sitting it on fresh apples, it might be very different. It might handle it nicely, but if you're, mm-hmm. if you're fermenting with apple juice... I just yeah, any any residual sweetness in fermented apple juice is just just very unpleasant. Hmm, interesting. Gives yeah, me the wrong flavor. Yeah, and I think that that's you know the the world of palates. You know, people are yeah. have very different very different experiences. I mean, we they say in the United States one of the reasons why apple flavored beverages, especially alcoholic ones, are so popular is that we all grow up on apple juice, yes. especially like your your you know Gen anyway. X. Yeah, Gen X forward, and then they, they, they provide the corollary, like, kids of the same age, say, in England, are, are love black currant, where most kids here wouldn't even know what it tasted like if it walked up and smacked them in the face. <laughs> you know, and, and you just, you realize that that's a cultural thing, so I think, I recall drinking a lot of sweet apple juice when I was a kid, so I developed a flavor, you know, profile for it, and it isn't you know, unpleasant, but I could certainly see if you weren't familiar with it, you know, to that degree, 
that it might just not taste right at all to have that much sugar after it's fermented. Yeah, no, we, we have a lot of fresh apple juice, I, and I, I actually really, really love fresh apple juice. It's just when you, when you ferment apple juice, hmm. the, the sugar in it, it the flavours change significantly, but the sugar gives you this really weird feeling, and, and you really need the carbonation.